Hello everyone, my name is Henry and welcome to another Adobe Extension Showcase slash review. I'm changing up the format a bit, so let's just jump right in. First of all, today's extension is the Mix Ooze extension from Moon Gorilla, the same company who I've also reviewed extensions for in the past, being that being Swatch Ooze and Coolerus, which were both extensions that worked really well together. And trust me, today's extension, Mix Ooze, they're clearly a fan of O's, is also a great combination to both of those extensions. It costs, similarly to Colorus, and I believe also Swatch Ooze, $14.99, which, is that a fair price? Is this an extension you want to use? That's one of the things I'll try to answer today. So, first of all, I just want to go through this in sort of sections. So, the first section is installation. This extension gets pretty much top marks for extensions. It's, for installation, I mean, it's one of those extensions that isn't available in the Adobe Exchange Store. Maybe that'll change as soon as the new one comes out, which I'm really excited about because uh, it looks a lot better, but, you know, I can understand them for not because it does have its fair share of issues. Instead, they're using their own custom installation method, which works really well. It doesn't really require you to run any scripts. It doesn't require you to download any separate programs. You just download an app, run it, and it installs the extension for you, and everything should be set. There is one thing I do want to mention. I do not attract this negatively on the extension, but I do just want to mention it. I have, most of the time, I run my Photoshop installation in debug mode when it comes to extension, which means extension signing is disabled. It's mainly a security thing, but when you're either debugging and testing extensions for others or running beta versions, generally speaking, you get them unsigned, and Photoshop refuses to run them when they're unsigned, so I simply have that disabled most of the time. However, Mixus actually denied me to run the extension in unsigned mode, meaning I had to make it run in signed mode. It's a fairly quick thing to do, and I won't exactly detail how to do it, because if you've already made Photoshop run extensions in sign unsigned mode, you probably already know how to make it run them, or can figure out how to run them in signed mode instead. So it was a bit of a nuisance having to change that, but again, I'm pretty good at doing it, so I can easily change it back once I'm done with this review, but in general, uh, I just wanted to note it in case you're like me and you have it on often and you plan to use this often. Might be something to consider, but I can fully understand it because it's probably got to do with, for one, the security of the customer and also their own security to avoid people tampering with their source code. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into the actual extension. And the second thing I want to talk about is presentation. And I get notifications from a forum. Great. Um, so the first thing about presentation is it looks good. The icons here are, most of them that are, you know, like the brush tool, if you look at the brush tool menu here, is pretty much the exact same. The icon design is pretty much the exact same as in the menu. It, it matches the CSS, like the, the flat spectrum design of Photoshop. I'm always a fan of this. When I download an extension, especially when it costs as much as $14.99, I expect it to match Photoshop. I want it to work, look good. If there's one thing I don't like, it's looking at atrocious looking panels that don't match the interface of the application I'm using. Um, and as well, which is another thing, I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, pop this panel out so that I can go into the Theme Switcher and show you. So the Theme Switcher is a free plugin or extension from David Baranka that allows you to easily change uh, colors in the Photoshop interface. It's really useful for anything. It's also really useful when you're doing this. So now change, you'll notice that the extension changes color with it. I personally prefer the darkest shade of Photoshop. See what I did there? Um, so, you know, but if you're running it in white, it'll work. If you're running it in slightly less white, more gray, that works. If you're running it in the default, it'll look like that. If you're running it in black, it'll look like that. It looks perfect against, you know, any other panel, as you can see here. Um, so that's good. I can, you know, I can like that. So it works like a normal panel, that's to be expected. And as I said, the icons match what well, the icons, and even the icons they made themselves, like this one or this one, have all been designed to look similar to what Photoshop would have if it had these features itself. So with that out of the way, let's move on to what this extension actually does. Well, as it's called Mixus, you can probably guess it has something to do with mixing, and that's specifically it. It's about mixing colors. So, you know, you choose your colors in Coolerus, and then you mix them together, and then you put the mixed colors into Swatchus. I know, trying to combine things together here. Um, so, in essence, it's for mixing, and it's based off of the mixing tools found in Krita and Paint Shop Pros, which are pretty popular for uh, painters. Not so much for photographers, but for painters, Paint Shop Pro and Krita are very popular. So, if you're 
used to that or you've kind of been interested in you know the mixing features of those applications perhaps you should take a look at this instead it'll probably be cheaper and it'll be easier to adapt to seeing as how you're probably already using photoshop so with that in mind let's go ahead and look at our work so you know we've got a, quite a few tools here and uh, we've got some sizing options and we've got separate undo and redo buttons in here along with this little three dot menu thing which we'll get back to that's mixing modes which is another nice thing. They've got tool tips for everything. So if you're ever in confusion of what it does, you can simply just check the tool tips and you'll know what it does. You've also got this neat little pretty smart color remember thing here. You'll notice I'll get back to this because it'll change as we're going. And before I even begin, I just want to mention that if you open up here, you've got a few palette choices. For example, choose default palette, which brings up this. You can choose the color wheel palette, which is this or you can bring up the skin tone. So this is a kind of examples, sort of. So if we choose the hand tool now, we can actually move on this canvas. Uh, this button, which kind of sets the tone, opens up the native color picker, allowing you to choose a background color. For example, say I want steel, and then I press the X button. You'll notice that it reflects that in the background changes. Uh, there's also an option, um, which I'll get back to actually. So with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and press the garbage button so that we reset it. And let's start drawing. So I'm going to actually change that background again to iron instead, like that. So it's a little bit better. So now uh, we can go and one thing I'm actually missing, and I do want to add this, is I've changed it defaults when I've done testing. And I couldn't find a way to actually reset it to the original color. So maybe adding a button on the menu here or something for resetting it would be a good idea. Just throwing that out there. It's not a deal breaker and anything like that. It's just a minor improvement that I think would make it generally a bit better if you just want to reset the settings or just that particular setting to be honest so let's go ahead then and uh, jump in so you've got the brush tool and you have three different size options um, some might say you need more than that personally three size options is great it's just mixing colors uh, I generally tend to use the big color big size because it's just easier to work with so you know you choose a color down here let's um, I'm gonna reset this because it's not the right there we go so say I want orange, and now a vid wants to contact me about updates. Great. So I'm going to choose red. I'm going to draw a bit of a line. So we've got red. So red is a really dominant color. And then we'll take yellow, and we'll draw that over. And you'll quickly start to notice that we're getting some orange into this. Now, every time I stop, like drop the mouse, and then draw again, you'll notice it freshens my yellow paint like a brush would if you dipped it in paint over again. So I could, for example, get in some red, sort of mix it again, because it, I kind of started draining out the red. So, so that works, but you know, what if, what if you're not doing it that way? What if you're just constantly rubbing the pencil back and forth and you want to release the mouse without it, you know, dipping it again? Well, you can use the dirty paintbrush tool, or just dirty brush tool, actually, which retains the color. So for example, if I drop it now, if you pay attention to the bar at the bottom, it changes the current color, which is the one marked in white. So now it remembers the last color that it was set to. So now it's a lot more orange. We can keep mixing. I'm going to mix that little red over there. And we're getting somewhere with the orange. So I'm going to do that, and it'll be more orange. Now, at this point, we've got a pretty you know, solid color. So at this point, we might want to change back to the, the, the red a bit and actually mix that in a bit more so we get a little bit more orange. And you know, you just keep on doing this until you have the orange that you want. So you'll notice here we've got a long, long ray of orange. And it avoids duplicates, so you know... All these are different shades of orange. They're just really similar shades of orange. Um, so, you know, we'll just keep going in a bit of a circle. And you notice, you know, from starting off with, I'm going to reset that again. Um, from starting off with just a simple red like that and a simple yellow like that, we've gotten quite far with what we have here, right? Um, I just want to add, in case you're interested in shortcuts there are actually shortcuts if you go to file my god so many things are wanting my attention today if we go to scripts uh right here you can see we've got mix use blend with background eyedropper uh next brush shape next cursor type open redo save toggle undo so all of these things can be keyboard shortcutted and uh, i believe there's even more scripts you can add there's instructions about this on their website mixuse.com but in essence, these things can be shortcutted. So you can like blend with the background. I'll come back to that. And these are the tools. So you've got like the eyedropper tool. Uh, you can do the next brush shape, next cursor type, open, redo, save, toggle, and undo. There is even more. Now, I can't completely remember. I believe you go into um, 
I haven't done this in a while because it's been ages since I actually did any keyboard shortcut changes. Um, I believe it's in under workspace. You go under keyboard shortcuts and menus. And then if we go under file uh, and we go under scripts, you can go ahead and add keyboard shortcuts right here. Actually, no, that's menus here. You can set colors. So what you'd want to do is actually go into file here and then go under to scripts and you can add a keyboard shortcut to each one of these. So if you're interested in that, that's a good way to add keyboard shortcuts. So these are installed when you install the extension and they're interfacing directly with that. So that's a great way to put shortcuts uh, in your extension and you can control them yourself. It doesn't add any by default. It probably can't, um, but you can add your own if you're interested. So that's a little neat trick for automation and making things go quicker if you're already really used to using shortcuts in Photoshop, adding some to these can really optimize your workflow. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and move on. So you got the eraser. It's pretty obvious what that does. It just removes whatever you've drawn. So if you kind of want to cut off a bit like that, you know, you can do that. There we go. Didn't really make it look better, but you know, this is an example. Get rid of that yellow as well. Eraser. Shouldn't really need an explanation. Then there is the palette knife tool, which if we use that a bit, you'll notice that it kind of pulls out the colors from wherever you are. So it kind of, it's like scraping on an image. You're kind of scraping your colors. So now I'm kind of, can use it all over. So you notice it doesn't really do much in the center here. It moves that orange more over. So, you know, it's kind of a great way to, you know, get a uh, control more of the shade of the color you have. Um, when you're drawing. So it's useful if you want to refine the color uh, before you color pick it with this. So this is useful because if you press this, you'll notice that the first color changes. If you want to paint more with that to further mix, you can easily choose whatever color you want. So for example, I chose that now. I'll go back to this brush and I can start mixing that in with what we already have, right? So that's a good example. Um, and then there's of course the color picker. All right, I've already gone over the color picker. Um, and again, these are sizes. So, you know, small, medium and large. You've got this, which is the actual color mode. So the one I kind of recommend is the average mixing mode, which does an average of both the colors you've chosen and mixes them together. You've also got additive and uh, subtractive mixing mode. Pretty obvious what to do. One of them adds the color and the other one removes that color from the other color. It's pretty simple. So generally speaking, you'll probably be finding yourself in the average mixing mode. It's the one that works best and it's the one that's the most useful. Further on, there's a few more things to look at. We've got a few settings here. So again, I went through the presets. Uh, you've got license page, which gives you information about your license. And you've got a neat built-in check for updates. So it'll check against the server what version you're running and if there's a new update and spinning beach ball of death. Um, and when you check for an update, if it finds one, it'll just tell you, you can press a link and it'll download the latest version and you can update. Great usability, makes it a lot easier to keep it updated. If you find a bug, you can just go here and report it. Uh, I guess that opens a window or a link or something. And you can press the uninstall button to uninstall the extension in case you're interested in doing that. So let's check the settings menu. What can you find in here? So you got performance. I generally tend to have that on the highest. This, I assume this goes on, you know, your processor, um, you know, how good the brush strokes look. Uh, it's by default, it's on half. I generally keep it up because I have a strong enough computer to do it. That might be a use, you know, like use case type thing. Maybe you don't need it that high. Maybe you do. I'd say experiment with it. We've got the cursor type. You got the normal, precise, and default. Normal works fine for me. And then you got brush shape. In the case you want to keep it default to Photoshop, you'll have it round, but maybe you want an ellipse or square. Square, you know, you can actually have square and ellipse brush sizes in Photoshop, but the default is always round. This is honestly something I'd like to see either integrated into the main interface over there instead or as keyboard shortcuts, but, you know, that might just be me. You've also got some options like blend paint with background. That's what I was talking about earlier with the keyboard shortcut. Uh, what that means is when you're drawing on your uh, background, when you're drawing on the background, the colors you choose will also blend with the background. By default, that's off. Generally speaking, I would keep that off. But in some situations, you might want it to blend with the background. Uh, always replace loaded files. Um, kind of self-explanatory. Randomized brush hair. Show sampling ring. Enable eraser for RMB. You know, pretty useful things. I'd keep most of these on um, and change tool when clicking to last used or brush or dirty brush or none. Last used works fine. And if you want to reset all these settings to default, there's a button for that too. Press close and you're back in here. 
So just an example here, you can also save your current palette. So then, instance, I just saved this to the desktop as a mixer palette. So I already have one. So I'll call this one, um, I'll call this one orange, right? Let's say that as orange. And then let's say I open the one that I made earlier today, the mixer palette. And it'll tell, do you want to replace the current palette completely? Since I saved it, uh, it'll be fine. But in theory, as it says here, if you press no, palette will be appended. Which uh, means it'll actually put it in the same place. It'll just move it to the side and just put it in the same place. In my case, I don't want that to happen. I just want to open the old one. So I'm going to press yes. And there we go. So here's the palette that I made earlier. I kind of mixed... I started off with the orange like I did today, and then I got it all the way up to kind of a light bluish color, which actually looks pretty nice. It looks like a kind of it looks like what you'd get in real life if you were mixing colors in this sense. That's pretty nice. And then say I want to go back to the one I had earlier. I want my uh, my orange right open, and it'll tell me do you want to replace. This time I'm going to say no, just to show you. So that's how that works. It'll basically just put it on top of what you already have. Just another point, I'm not sure if this is even doable for them, but if you could move these individually so that I could not av avoid having them on top of each other, it would be pretty nice. Might be a bit difficult to pull off, though. Um, with that said, there's really not a lot more to talk about. I've pretty much been over everything, uh, unless we don't count that. So that reloads the swatches. And this clears your, I'm guessing, canvas? Yeah, canvas is probably the right word to use. So all in all... Um, pretty self-explanatory the rest of it um so then the remaining question comes do i recommend this extension and to be honest with you if you're an artist uh a painter or whatever that uses photoshop um yeah sure i recommend it personally i probably won't be using it too much because i'm a photographer i have actually been using swatch use um quite a bit because I am a photographer and it does happen that I want to save some colors for other projects uh, where I'm, for example, working in InDesign and combining things. It's, I actually do use Swatch Use. Uh, I do not use, Mix, I probably won't be using Mix Use that much though. I also use Coolerus because color pickers. Uh, Mix Use is probably the first extension for them I won't be using personally, but I can definitely see the use for artists. I have several artist friends who would probably love this mixing functionality. And it's almost surprising that Photoshop doesn't have mixing functionality this from before. Um, and at the same time, if you're from, if you're like a, an artist using Krita or PaintShop Pro, and the only reason you're using them is because of the mixing functionality, and you're actually considering to move over to Photoshop, then maybe this extension is perfect for you. You'll just pay $14.99, and you'll have the perfect extension for what you're doing. I think that could be a good idea. Um, maybe, or maybe you're already using Photoshop, we were considering to move to Krita or PaintShop Pro. Well, now you don't have to, you can just buy Mixus. So all in all, I think is a good extension and it's definitely one of the better ones I've reviewed because it has that good presentation. It's easy to install and it's got brilliant functionality that really does add to the Photoshop experience. And is it worth the $14.99? Definitely. If you don't think it's worth it, perhaps wait for a sale or maybe find a discount somewhere. They're probably happy people who would be glad to have a sale nonetheless. Um, with that said, thank you for watching this video. There will be links down in the description. They're not affiliate links. They're just links to the extension. It's only available on the mixus.com website. There's no exchange or creative market links because it's not on there. But again, Mixus website makes it really easy to pay and get the extension downloaded and their license system works brilliantly. All in all... It's a good extension. I recommend it. Check it out in the description below. And if you're curious or have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below and I'll probably and I'll hopefully be able to get an answer to you fairly quickly. And if you're interested in more videos like this, do subscribe and tell me if you like the new way to kind of segment the format a bit. I feel like the, the last few episodes were a bit too, you know, what should I say? Unsegmented? I guess that works. So with that in mind, I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you for watching this video.